but it's also Burger King had what? Have it your way. Have it your way, yeah. Which, if you use a different tone on that, makes it sound very ominous. Have it your way. Okay, Burger King. Have it your way. Whoa. Sorry, Burger King. Didn't mean to bother you. The first topic that I have for you uh, will probably get me canceled. No, it probably won't. Perfect. I know you're going to be uh, excited about it. Something happened a few months ago, and so obviously now is the time I want to talk about it. Yeah, um, that makes sense. <laughs> that uh, got me thinking about how people interpret information. and, uh, and Poorly. Poorly, yes. Actually, that is a really good uh, way of putting this, because back in May, uh, the Fallout television series was starting in... And uh, Elon Musk had asked on the Everything app, uh, have you played Fallout 3? And somebody replied, war, war never changes. And, and Elon responded, they do say that frequently in the game, but actually war changes a lot. And in case you're wondering if this is a one-off uh, there, there's another influencer, Ashley St. Clair, who had said, War, war never changes, can you guess what I'm replaying? And Elon Musk again responds, Every time the game said that, I thought, war does change. So, he's really in on this. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> only credit I'm ever gonna give to Elon Musk. Yes. Right here, mm. is, he is kind of a meme lord. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he has at least a little bit of a finger on the pulse of meme stuff. And I would consider Somewhat. War Never Changes and, and that stuff as memory. So. Which is why it's surprising that he doesn't quite seem to understand the interpretation of it. Like, a lot of people made fun of him about this. But I thought it was really interesting as I keep churning this over and over again in my head when it comes to uh, Musk's interpretation of this, that it does speak volumes to how we present information and how people can interpret it differently. Because, like, for me, War Never Changes was uh, more of a philosophical thing that Fallout was always trying to explain. That the mechanisms and the reasons why war happens is intrinsically always the same. Humans always kind of end up in war for similar reasons, because they want territory, they want power, there are these, there are these mechanisms that they always end up with that cause conflict, which ends up with war. And so that was what I always took away from War Never Changes. Oh, you know what I always took away from War? War Never Changes? What? War is hell. And that's as deep as I went with it. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? That's a perfectly fine, like, basic thing uh, that I think that people would interpret it as. I, I guess the, the reason why I came to that conclusion is when you look at Fallout lore and they, because they talk about so many wars right up to the present day, the reasons mm. why all those wars happen are because of the same basic framing like the fuel wars that eventually lead to the apocalypse and then the ones that happen in Fallout 4. It's all about this group wants certain things and this group also wants those things and they can't, you know, ha both have them. And so now they need to, they, they have decided that the option to fix this is to go to war because they don't believe that there's any other solution to the problem. That happens regardless of whether you're doing a war with sticks and stones or with a nuke like the the that doesn't change musk is envisioning this as the technology behind the, the art war. of war <laughs> yeah the actual the actual technology that's used in war changes which is true I will in the way you that. wage war changes in, in the way you wage war yeah, yeah. we, we so have said, drones now as, yeah. as sun tzu would say the art of war changes the art of war this is true if you want to look at it and i think it's really interesting because musk is a, is a technologist there's a lot of them that are out there and so they view the world through the uh lens of technology mm. technology is really the primary thing that we go into and so from that lens 
I could understand why someone would come to that conclusion. Because there were other people that then started fighting about this that, no, he's right, war does change. Look at these, look, look at these ancient soldiers, and look at these modern soldiers. They don't look anything like each other. To which I was They're saying, still doing the same thing. Which is the point I was trying to make to, <laughs> like, I think I even made a point. It's like, they're still doing it for the same reasons. They're even in the same area. You just showed like a crusader that's in the Middle East and a U.S. soldier that's also in the Middle East. They're fighting in the same place. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same. It's, it's the same reasons. They're fighting for the same reasons. The thing that I think is really interesting and why I wanted to bring this up is because there is uh, an intrinsic way that we give information to others when we design a game when we run a game anything like that and i can understand why some people might interpret it differently but i was kind of interested in how you make it understandable to somebody who might not understand because you want to have players say you're a dm you have six people around a table you want to have them have the same basic information or understand the theme of what you're doing at least to some degree the same like you know <laughs> that that you'd want them to all understand something at least somewhat similar without getting into media literacy as a topic which is a whole thing but how media is not literate <laughs> it, it, it is if it's a meme yeah that's true the memes are literate what do you do to help uh, a player or uh, a team get information that they're all going to be able to uh, interpret in a similar way. Well, I think if you want them all to be on the same page, you kind of need to give better context than just a philosophical, vague statement. Sure. Or even just a statement that could be taken as a philosophical statement. As you said, you took it as like, oh, yes, the mechanisms and the philosophy of the statement is what you were going into. Right. And me, on the other hand, went, Wow, that's a line. War sucks. Yeah, I guess I guess war never changes. Yeah, yeah I can sucks. get behind, I can get behind that. But I didn't go deep into thought about it because it's just generally not what I do. I didn't sit there and go, huh? Yeah, why? Did, war does why did never change. That? Yeah, why did they say that? Because yeah. I I don't go into that type of stuff. So you have to kind of come to the happy medium where you need the information to be at a base level understandable, just like war never changes. Yeah, war sucks. I get it. That's easy to understand. But on the other end, if you need it to be deeper, if you want them to have that deeper meaning, yeah. then you need to be able to pick your words carefully in that sense. Because like, right. if you just pe want people to go, oh yeah, war never changes, that's it. But if you want them to have more a deeper thought about it, like you did, right. then you have to be like, what does that mean? Right. You know, kind of posit the question to them. Yeah, like I, I would say the the way that I get about that is not by just seeing those words. It's about seeing the rest of the context around it in the actual Fallout games, where yeah. it becomes more explicit that that's what they're talking about every time. In fact, even every time it's said, usually with Ron Perlman's voice, uh, it then goes into the conflicts that lead you to where you are at and that there is now another conflict that is brewing because war never changes. And so they provide that context and then playing the game ultimately then gives you more context for it, which is in similar fashion to almost any slogan. If you think about it, like literally yeah. like uh, going to McDonald's and seeing I'm loving it doesn't tell you anything about the business or what you're going no. to eat there. <laughs> it's just, just, that's sloganeering and it's supposed to invoke something, but not without context. So yeah. as opposed to the previous slogan, which is uh, what we'll love to see you smile. Uh, yes, yes. But it's also Burger King had what? Have it your way. Have it your way, yeah. Which, if you use a different tone on that, makes it sound very ominous. Have it your way. Okay, Burger King. Have it King. your way. Whoa. Sorry, Burger King. Didn't mean to bother you. I also don't want to make it so explicit where I have to, like, sit down and, like, break down what the thing means. Like, yeah. Like, you don't want to do that with, uh, like, like, try to explain to somebody a poem. But, like, now we gotta analyze the poem over three hours. You lose the context of, like, what? Yeah. 
and, and not only do you lose the context of the poem, then you lose my interest in it by making me analyze it. Right. Sometimes media analysis goes so far that you get bored with the idea of the of the, the context I in get, the first place. I get bored of the idea of the idea of media analysis. Yeah. Which is why I don't encourage a lot of games to front load me with a lot of lore and information. Yeah. Do um, not lore dump at the front. Do it later no. when I'm invested. Exactly. I need to be playing the game and enjoying the game, and then you, you pepper it in for world building afterward. Uh, War never changes is just one of those great phrases that you can start the game off with to give you just a baseline, and then you can expand upon it as you go through the story. You know what I think is a better opening line? What? Oh, I see you're finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line. That yeah. was a great. It's also a great meme since we're talking about memes. Yes. Honestly, when it comes to Fallout New Vegas, because we will be talking a little bit more about Vegas in the next segment, I love that opening with Benny. And because I think that there's so much that's going on with that one scene where you're just bound in in the in the graveyard with Benny and the two great cons, but you don't know anything like this. You're just like, there's a guy in a checkered suit. There's two guys with like headdresses on behind him and they're sitting there and you, you don't know why you're there or anything. And it just, it invokes so many interesting questions. And then ultimately Benny's like, I know that you feel like you had a 14 carat run of bad luck, but the truth is that the game was rigged from the start. And then he shoots you in the head, and that's how the game starts. And if that doesn't get you immediately intrigued by what the hell is going on, you know, and that's, that's a lot of information, but also adds more questions than anything else. Uh, I think that if you bring something up like War Never Changes, it should invoke a lot of curiosity and questions about what that means. Doesn't necessarily mean that... I don't necessarily think the phrase did, though, because it wasn't a question. It was just a statement. It was just a statement. But it was a statement as part of, like, an opening cinematic, so it was kind of just like a, ah, here's this just, like, worldview, essentially, this guy's giving me about this universe. Sure. War Never Changes. You could go deep about it. Obviously, you did. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, it's not presented with any context of needing to go deeper. It's just War Never Changes. Here's, like, a video... With different warfare things going on. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get what you're saying there. I say, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then it just goes into the game. It doesn't ask you to go and think about it more. It just kind of goes, eh, here's a, here's a line. Additionally, though, something that I started thinking about, maybe this is why I wanted to bring it up now, is that it's not necessarily bad that you have like a room full of players that might interpret something differently because I think it can add to the general framework of your storyline because some people might not understand the context of it and some people might or it gets reframed. For all I know, when they originally started with War Never Changes, they were taking an interpretation like yours that like, war sucks. And then by the end of that, through the interpretation of people and reading more into it, it gets into more of a philosophical idea. Um, I think that that was implicit from the beginning, but I don't know. I didn't work on the game. Yeah. Um, but but I, I always got the impression that that was what they were trying to say at the beginning. Uh, as, as with a lot of, of games that are trying to, you know, take sci-fi and explain something about our society and you know the the pitfalls that you might fall into uh they have a tendency to be more overt with that uh but war never changes is a a great saying it even comes up in the television series yeah of course it does it's not followed until you've uttered those words until somebody says it i don't want to be too pedantic about a lot of stuff even though it's one of my favorite things in the world (laughs) <laughs> to be okay. pedantic. To be pedantic, yeah. I also enjoy being pedantic. So yes. <laughs> I love I love being able to just, like, pick apart your sentence and just kind of go, Ah, well, you said is instead of was, and therefore, you know. Um, great times. But I can also it's tell great, you... It's right, great, right until you get punched in the face by someone. Until somebody rolls their eyes and says, I have something to do over there. And That's then, how I get rid of people. Pedantry? Yeah. Yes. Good. Great. Have you ever encountered, like, 
kind of like an esoteric phrase that was presented to you where the context of it might not have necessarily made sense to you at the time. Not that I can rightfully remember, because I didn't have this beforehand to think about. This is fair. I launched, <laughs> I launched these at Alex without him knowing a damn thing that we're going to be talking about. So. I mean, the, the only one thing that I have in mind from recently is just because I thought about it a little bit ago, is uh, Albert Camus, which is, one must imagine Sisyphus happy. Okay. Yeah. So, what was your what was your original thought about that? Well, I was listening to like video essays about oh, okay. stuff to do with that, so I didn't really have to do much thought. They explained it. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. What is your thought on that, though? One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it seems optimistic to me, or that that optimism remains eternal. I uh, I have trouble imagining oh oh well so here's one way I could interpret it is that maybe just maybe Sisyphus actually enjoys rolling the boulder up the hill maybe he does <laughs> that, that literally maybe this is his purpose in life and therefore maybe this is not a struggle to him even though it seems like a struggle to us outside of it but I don't know what their interpretation was that you were listening to. But <laughs> yeah, um, I like that because I don't really typically think of a thing like that as with the war never changes. I kind of take it on the face value and go, OK, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess we can imagine him happy if you want. But that's fine. I don't yeah. go in. I don't go deeper about it. Right. But you I just say it and you're like, ah, oh, these things. Yeah, I can I can kind of imagine that. Well, you know, I find it fascinating. There are a few phrases that I just uh, that rattle around in my head because I think about him. Um, I want to say it was Lord de Montesquieu, but there was a great quote that was, "If the triangles made a god, they would give him three sides." And I really like. <laughs> well, yeah, if there were triangles, they would absolutely give yeah. him three sides because then it'd be a triangle. Yeah, and I think the reason, I, I, but yeah. pretty sure that one is just gods are created in your own image. Right. Instead of, yeah, it, in the same way that we say that, like, man's created in God's image, it's actually man creates God in, <laughs> in his own image, which I think is just fun. That's just a fun one. I guess it wouldn't be correct of me uh, to say that Elon Musk doesn't understand Fallout, although that's probably going to be the title of the video. Uh, but <laughs> We but, could always just title it War Never Changes. We could just or, title it War Never Changes. We could just title We could quote Musk in the title and just be like, well, actually, War does change, quote Elon Musk. Yes. <laughs> Elon never changes. We'll just we'll use that. him in the yeah. thumbnail because that's clickbaity. Oh, yes. We'll definitely have that. War never changes. It's not necessarily that he... Uh, doesn't understand it, but he definitely understands it in a way that most people probably did not. I think the reason why a lot of people gave him shit about it was just because of that. Because a lot of people kind of came in with the actual textual storyline reasons why war never changes, not the technological reasons. Um, because I think when you go through Fallout and you see the story that they're telling it, it is supposed to be more about the human element and the divisions and the divisiveness and the factions that come into it, not the technological scientific aspect of what you're using to wage that war. Not that you couldn't look at it that way, but it does seem kind of cold and heartless and, and mechanical. When well, that is on par way. for a billionaire. <laughs> Again, technologists <laughs> technocrat view of the world the humanity does kind of get stripped out and you look at the technology part of it which is in my view kind of a problem but that doesn't mean that you couldn't sit down and play a game with them well i wouldn't want to but they have know, a, there's a whole series on youtube with sleepy joe and trump and Oh, yeah. One must all playing games. It's, oh, yeah. it's all AI voiced. Yeah, and it's uh, terrible. But, you know, the thing, <laughs> the thing about it is, is that, yeah, you can, you can go and watch that, I guess. What phrase did you hear originally that you got new context for later on, after you could think about it for a while? Um, and, uh, you know, maybe it's something from Fallout, but it could be something from real life, 
could be something from fiction. I have a quote to leave you, you and the listeners with. Okay. The viewers, perhaps, even if you're on YouTube. Um, it's a quote. I don't remember the game, but it's, uh, I walked into a room and I heard someone say, I'm going to play a game of hide the dagger in your gut and make damn sure you win. <laughs> Good quote. So think on that. Think on that. Philosoph- philosophize. Philos- philosophize? Yeah, that. Good. My brain was like, hmm, that's not right. <laughs> um, you put a couple more uh, syllables in there than you really emphasizes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>